I'm Mike Sheridan, I'm 31 years old. I ran an ultramarathon from Limerick to Dublin in April of 2012. And my brother had done mixed martial arts for 10, 15 years, but more specifically jiu-jitsu. So the UFC was always on um, in the house. And that's just something about the fighters that just really fascinated me. And I think this type of mindset of somebody that gets into an octagon or a cage or a ring or wherever it is with somebody else and just goes at it. There's something primal about it. I think there's something inherently male about it and masculine about it and just, um, it really appealed to me, something primal. And I want to put myself in the mindset of, of one of these fighters. And the best way I think of doing that is actually going and, and having a fight, which is uh, what I foolishly or not signed up to do. The UFC is the biggest promotion in the world today, and a lot of the growth in MMA is down to the UFC, but you have to separate the two. MMA is not the UFC or, or, or vice versa. The MMA is the sport, and the UFC happens to be the biggest promotion in the world at the moment. It's fair to say Mike's challenge is incredible because he's going from not to 60 or whatever you want. It's like starting having never climbed a mountain and you want to take on the Himalayas. Um, so he's gone basically, you know, not quite from the couch, but he's gone from no fighting background to being in the cage three months later in, in the octagon or whatever they're going to be using on the night. Basically, I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu about uh, 12 years ago with John Cavanagh in the Stripe Last Gym. And I was, you know, really interested in it and, you know, I you know, fell in love with it straight away. So basically, I was training every day, you know, twice a day. And um, John was like, he thought I was getting really good. So he says, I recommend you, you know, try a bit of MMA. So I started adding in some, tr uh, some striking and stuff and um, doing a little bit of wrestling and stuff. And then eventually, within maybe a year or so, we, I, um, I competed, I started to compete. Mm -hmm. And that was all like 12 years ago. Mike is going to train with me um, almost well, as often as he can, but ideally we want to get him down every day, if he can, maybe twice a day, uh, five days a week, and we're going to train him to, to have a fight. <sighs> Right, that's good. Right. You have an idea what you're going for, anyway. Right? In, in uh, MMA, you've got to cover three types of, you know, three areas in fighting. Basically, grappling, ground grappling, which is uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, uh, the clinch range, which is wrestling and, and toy boxing and stuff, and then the striking range, which is also toy boxing, boxing, and all various uh, stand up martial arts. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna cover a lot of that. We're also gonna do a lot of um, strength and conditioning, okay? Because we want them in, in, in peak condition. So we'll be doing strength and conditioning, uh, um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, toy boxing, boxing, and uh, yeah, really, really messing them up pretty much, you know. So it's gonna be great. Eighty-four, forty. Yeah, that's good. So basically, Mike will hopefully be fighting at. Uh, 77. So uh, yeah, you, you, you gotta get rid of that, get rid of everything. Yeah. Um, no, basically he's, he's gotta go on obviously a strict diet. Okay, I'll, I'll send you on the diet, and um, yeah, you'll be, you'll have, you gotta get a few pounds off. Probably get you around 80, 79, and then we'll do yeah. the week of the fight. We'll, we'll need to cut some more See, and like, stuff like that. I'm used to this is the heaviest side to be because I'm used to training for an ultra or an Ironman or something. Yeah, so, you, so I've been eating what I wanted. Yeah. 
and then just my natural weight is 81, 82 kilos. Oh. But because yeah. I've been lifting weights and or I was yeah. lifting weights, now it's like I'm just fucking heavy throw or rim by a fucking yeah. long shot. Um, yeah, and if you're training regularly, training hard, you'll definitely, you'll definitely knock off maybe four or five dollars, and then we'll only have a, you know, a bit of a cut to seventy-seven. Yeah. Um, so, good. so is there any, there's no point in me doing a fucking five mile run in the morning, is no. there? It's not worth the shit. No. Ideally, like, what I'd like you to do, if you can, if you're going to be doing that in the morning, is sprints. Yeah. Um, so, basically what I'm saying is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds less. So you sprint as fast as you can for 20 seconds, rest for 10, sprint again for 20 seconds, rest for 10, you do that 10 times. Yeah. And you do that every morning, it's going yeah. to get you a good good tank for a fight, you know? Yeah. Because what we want is, we don't want you, you're not going to be in there long distance, you're going to be in there doing explosive movements, you know, they're explosive posts. So when you exchange, it's going to be like, maybe three or four seconds of the two years, going full on, you know, exerting a lot of energy and then moving off and back and yeah. So we want you walking explosive posts, you know what I mean? So yeah. that, that type of training is going to be great for you. So now with the right, the hand's going to come up and down. So bring the hand high, no, 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 hand comes high and then comes down, yeah? And down. But yeah, he's going to have to obviously lose a couple of pounds, he's going to have to get uh, lean, he's going to lose some of that uh, body fat and stuff. So, yeah, diet, he's going to be on a strict diet, okay? More than likely he'll be on like a paleo diet, meat and veg and stuff. And uh, yeah, he's going to get a strength and conditioning and stuff as well. So, yeah, he's got a tough uh, three months ahead of him. Again. Lift the head up, and that doesn't require any strength. Yeah. Once you've got your posture broken, yeah. okay, I can, I can control and get the yeah. knees and all the attacks in. So yeah. you go from one necktie, elbows in, hand, put the head in, now look, ice LP, you're not high enough. Uh, that's there, that's perfect. You know, with no posture there, no control. The only thing, I'm, you know, it can really do at the moment is, you know, sure. probably go down. But if you're going to throw a, a knee up there, yeah. it's game over for me. So, yeah. but you can get this position, it's, it's perfect. You know? Yeah. Boy, pull the head into the chest. Yeah. Okay, so go again. Yeah. Now for me, if I am cut here, I'm going to rotate through one. Yeah. And now I got you. Yeah. And you've got to rotate your hand in. One, two. And it's always one at a time. Some guys get greedy and try to put two in, yeah. keep your elbows together. It's impossible for them to get two hands in. Yeah. Not so tough to get one. Okay, so that's the game. Yeah. All right, sound good. Let's see how it going. In Ireland, what you had was a lot of guys who were doing traditional martial arts, and they, they almost realised that this on its own isn't enough. If you want to be a real fighter, a real well-rounded fighter, you need, you need other things. You like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, boxing, wrestling, a combination of things. So up in the north, there was guys like Davy Patterson, uh, Tom Lamont, and down south, there was mainly Andy Ryan and John Kavanagh, and, you know, and a host of other names. There's probably too many to mention, but it's guys like those brought the sport to Ireland in about the mid-90s. And as I said, it was based on having seen an early UFC event. My name is John Kavanagh, and I'm the head coach of Straight Blast Gym Ireland. What's always, be, what's always blown me away about all of my fighters, all of them across the board, from the amateurs to the absolute pros, is the dedication they put in. And that's what I'd like people on the outside to see, that they, you know, they think it's tugs, the animals in the cage. Look at these guys, day in, day out. They treat their body like a temple. They very strict diets, training hard, twice a day, every day. That's very inspiring to me. failure are, to, are together. Nobody has gone through their fighting career without losing, losing badly and really what, what's, for me what success is about is how you deal with that failure, learning from the failure, improving yourself and then carrying on.
talking about you're not eating breakfast at the minute. No, not properly. And well, it's never Snickers, eaten is it Snickers breakfast? A Snickers uh. is not breakfast. The ideal breakfast would be having meat and nuts. Now, if you're struggling with that as well, you could have a couple of mornings of the porridge. You could bring in eggs as well. So you could scramble them, boil them, soft boil them is better, or poach them. And then use a variety of nuts. Uh, as I was saying with eggs, people tend to have eggs over and over and over again. With eggs, you just have it once, twice a week, and that's it. Porridge once, twice a week, and then have your meat and nuts as well, other mornings. So Saturday and Sunday, if that suits you better for work and having time to prepare. So for every hour of exercise you, you do, right, you should be drinking a litre of water. Right? So if you're training two hours a day, that's two, hour, two litres of water just there. Yeah. Right? And based on your body weight, just to maintain, okay, you're saying 86. So you should be drinking over three and a half litres of water a day. So we're basing off, you're, you're going in at 16.7% body fat. Okay. Right. Now, with the formula we use, it kind of highlights problem areas, right? So your problem area is basically your belly button and your, your love handle, right? So they're your kind of two main priorities. And that's all taken care of through nutrition. So if you manage your nutrition, manage insulin correctly, they'll drop really fast. So this is completely based off your nutrition, right? Other areas, like as I was saying earlier, like on your legs and stuff like that, is, is harder to lose because it's more to do with detoxification, yeah. right? But for where you're storing it, if you do the nutrition we've been recommending, then this should fly off. And with the amount of activity you're going to be doing, yeah. it's going to come off even quicker. Okay. In right. terms of where, in terms of where I'm at, though, say six and a half percent body fat. Sixteen. Sixteen, 16 and a half. Sixteen and a half. Six yeah. And a, yeah. Fucking definitely not six and a half. Yeah. Uh, but sixteen and a half percent. Like, is that bad in general, or where does that, where does that so fit on the spectrum? For a male, you want to be between nine and twelve percent. Yeah. Without. You know, that's just a regular person, yeah. right? So, for the fires and stuff like that, like, we usually get them between 4 and 6%. But down to the right on, I remember you were saying eat meat and, uh, eat, uh, meat and nuts, and I remember the first day I came in here with pistachio nuts, salted pistachio nuts, yeah. and uh, I think it was John around. What the hell is that you're eating? Like, that nuts, like, you can have salted nuts, yeah. like, you know what I mean? So, so salted nuts, you were dry roasted. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. it was yeah. tasty anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice. So, uh, he'll send you on stuff. Yogurt covered. Yeah, he'll send you on the stuff and uh, you'll have no excuse. Then. Yeah. We are joined by Mike Sheridan, who is the editor of Joe.ie. He's a regular on this program. He's always had a tendency to do vaguely silly things. <laughs> like he ran 130-something miles in a day and a half. or one. Of, but you thought it was justifiable. Now he's decided he's going to do something that may well put him in hospital or in a box. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I'll be okay. I don't think I'll end up in, in a box anyway. But You're yeah. already covered in bruises. I'm already covered in bruises, but you know, it's giving my body some character by the end of this. My face <laughs> will have some character, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I've decided to uh, have a mixed martial arts fight, and I've spent the past six weeks or so uh, training and dieting. And the man sitting beside you is Owen Roddy, and Owen is here because Owen himself is a successful mixed martial arts fighter, but he's also the guy who is going to not only keep you out of hospital, but make you victorious. Yeah, basically I've, I've been training Mike for the past uh, six weeks, as he said, and uh, you know, so we're trying to get him to a, a, a good level in all aspects of mixed martial arts. And, uh, what level did he start at? <laughs> Literally nothing. Yeah, he had <laughs> no, no background in anything. Like some guys will join uh, MMA and they'll have a boxing background or a wrestling background. Mike had absolutely Mike had none. Journalism. Well, yeah, and he he does <laughs> a bit of running, so he can uh, he, he can Fish. run around the cage a little bit yeah, if, yeah. if he needs to, you know. <laughs> yeah. But no, he's he's getting to a decent level now. Him. Um, so let me get straight. He's, he's going to have in total preparation time four months. Yes, there yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. And then you're less. going to put him in a cage. Yeah. With a man who does this semi-professionally, yeah, an, an amateur, you know, an amateur. But, uh, it's one thing to say that you're going to do an ultra marathon, or that you're going to take up long distance running, or that you're going to do triathlons and all that. But what Mike is setting out to do is put himself in a position where he's going to get punched in the face a lot when he doesn't have to. I think he's absolutely 100% nuts. Still is the belief that it's two guys stripped to the waist, go into a cage and only one guy's leave. It's probably safer than boxing. And I mean that from the point of view of if there's a striking battle going on, 
and then one guy gets knocked out or knocked down, that could be the fight over. Uh, you could watch a boxing match, a guy could get knocked down twice in a round and he gets stood back up for an eight count, he might not be totally back together. He's got to go eight down for the next round, he could do that again, another two knockdowns. Um, so in terms of the fight finishing, yeah, I think it's much safer, much safer. Ultimately, the fighter can finish the fight, he can tap out. Well, yeah, I, I, now I, I, you know, people say I don't tap, but I would tap if it was, you know, if it was, you know, it was really on or, you know, I, I didn't think I'd, I could escape. But um, yeah, you know, if, if people think you're going to be in there and you're going to be in there and give it your, your all and you're not going to quit, it, it, does, it does scare them a little bit, I think, you know. You know, if you're being hit hard with, with your opponent's best shot and you're still standing there, there, a lot of doubt goes into the opponent's mind, you know. They start to, they start to worry, well, how am I going to put this guy away? I've hit him with everything. I've had him in my best submission and he, he's still here. I think people think MMA is, is just a street fight. Two guys, you know, two thugs, you know, killing each other. And it's, it's, a, the, exact, it's the total opposite. You know, if, if you come in here and you watch guys training, uh, training for a fight, you know, you'll see they're training their heart out. They're on strict diets. They're, they're um, you know, they're just 100% focused on, on their goals, you know. And, you know, for a thug to come in uh, and try and do this, they, they wouldn't last a week, you know. Any person that's in an MMA club, I'm sure, um, if you talk to them, they're very nice, very approachable. Um, and we're all just here willing to learn, OK? Any, any guys with egos, you know, they'll be found out and they'll leave because you've got to get in and, you know, you can talk all you want, but you've got to get in and still prove it on the mat. So, you know, it's, um, you know, anyone with a bad attitude usually, usually dies out after the first week or two. You know, it's usually just nice guys that want to learn something new and, you know, want to achieve their goals, so. The best points for me is that I get to do something I love every day. It's, it's, it's basically my job, so my branch is off the bases. I, I get to train all day, every day, and then I do some kind of private lessons with some girls who want to learn jiu-jitsu and MMA for self-defense purposes and this kind of thing. So my whole life is based around the sport, which I love. So, you know, they say, yeah, if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. And uh, I feel very lucky to be able to do that. I feel very happy that I've gotten to such a high level that I, I'm actually able to continue going as I am. You know, I find a lot of people kind of, they get to a certain age and then and they, you know, might, might go, go to college or get a, get a job and they find that's just, the, the re they do that because that's what they're supposed to do. But, you know, I got to that point and I was, I, I was finishing college and but I was competing professionally and I had the decision of, you know, getting a, a normal job, uh, making a decent living or pursuing my passion and, and, and chasing my dream. If I chose the, the option which was made more sense financially, which was just getting a normal job, I'd probably, I wouldn't be at peace with myself. I'd be, you know, sit, sitting at home um, after, just annoyed, wondering would I have, been, have made it if, if I had pursued my dream. So I, I, I took the option of chasing my dream and, and, and I feel I'm pursuing inner peace doing that. I wouldn't say getting hit is something you can learn, but you can definitely condition yourself um, to it. It's not something you want to particularly get good at because taking punches uh, isn't, the, isn't the aim of the game. The aim of the game is to not get hit at all. But uh, definitely for sure when you're, when you're training day in, day out, and you're, you're sparring and, and you're taking punches, you can build yourself up to it and, and you, you flinch less, I suppose. It's very nerve-wracking. I, I thought I was going to be able to handle it a lot better than what I actually did because it's obviously the person that you love and and they're fighting and all you want to do is protect them. But um, but yeah, you know, Cahill knows what he's doing. It's, it's his career and his perfection and um, 
he's very confident, which gives me a lot more confidence in it. So. Yeah, the biggest aspect for me, um, I, I suppose, was always going to be the diet. Um, and I'm, I'm cutting weight, and I kind of cut a lot of weight fairly quickly. I cut about eight or six kilos um, since we started, like, kind of full-on training my own a uh, month or so ago. Um, it hasn't been easy. Um, keep getting sent free donuts and stuff at the show that I eat and walking past like boxes of Snickers. Uh, it's really difficult, especially given the diet that I had before. So what I was used to doing before was, you know, training hard, getting up at five, six in the morning, running 15 miles, going to work, um, after work then running 15, 16 miles or wherever again, and kind of eating what I wanted as a result. So the diet aspect, still huge, uh, still a pain in the hoop. Um, but I wasn't expecting the training to be as, I knew it was going to be insane. The lifestyle for an MMA fighter is very, very simple. And I've always told my guys, it's, it's actually quite easy to become a world champion. It just has to be your every waking moment. That's all it has to be. So from when you open your eyes to when you close your eyes, you can have no other thoughts other than uh, improving yourself physically and mentally in mixed martial arts. And for the guys, it's pretty much the life of a hermit. They get up, train, go home, rest, eat, sleep back, train, go home, rest, eat, sleep, repeat, and then maybe, maybe after five or six years of doing that, six days a week, they might be able to make some money from it and they might be able to get, uh, make a career out of it, but maybe not. Like, like, like my coach says, you know, it, it must be your every waking moment, it must be non-stop, 24-7, 365 days a year, and even still, you know, things can happen that, that um, it's not, it's not, there's no pot of gold at the end of the rain, you know, it's not guaranteed for everyone. Guys train their whole life in martial arts to get to the UFC, then to ho hopefully someday compete against the best in the world and prove that they're the best martial artists on earth. It's a tough game, this game. You know what I mean? It is a tough game, but, but uh, martial arts teaches you, you know, it just teaches you so much, teaches you humility, teaches you, um, it just teaches you how to handle everyday life, you know, whether, you know, you should, you should, you should approach it and not, not look to make money from it. You know, you should just show up, do what, you, no, regardless of what it is, whether it's martial arts. You know, you show up and put in the time at what you love, and and be comfortable in your surroundings, be confident in what's going on. And regardless, you know, if you put in all the hours and and you are truly, truly 100% dedicated. A lot of people think they are. You know, a lot of people think it's in their mind 365 days a year, 24/7, but it's really not. If if you show up at the gym, you love what you're doing. It's constantly on your mind. Eventually, you will make you will make money out of it. You know what I mean?
Striking is coming on, he's, he's grappling every every aspect of MMA. He's he's progressing in, and um, honestly, we, I, I think you know his, his wrestling is is, is uh, you know his, his, his wrestling is what, what he's the best at, and um, so what we're going to try and do is develop a game plan around that type of uh, that type of uh, character, you know. I know that 365 days a year, 24/7, my mind is on this. This is just another. This is just another day for me. You know what I mean? There's no, um, there's no rituals. I don't have rituals. You know, rituals to me or superstitions is, an, is fear. You know what I mean? If you have something that you have to do, I have to wear these lucky pants. If I don't wear these lucky pants, I can't go out there. That to me is just another thing for fear. So I don't. I could do anything in the lead up to the fight. I could do. I could wear anything. You know, I don't have none of that. I just show up and do what I do every other day. Day in, day out, show up, compete, and trust trust what I trust what I know, trust what I have been doing all my life. There's no more mental game than uh, than MMA or than fights, fight sports. You know, you're going in there on your own against another guy, and uh, you know it's a fight. It's a, it's so different mentally than playing any other sport. You know, it's it's uh, you have to be really strong-willed. So uh, you know, sports psychology is an important part of my training. I I, I do uh, I work with a sports psychologist, David Mullins, and uh, you know I treat that as important as doing my boxing training and my jiu-jitsu training. So how have you been since the last time I chatted to you? Yeah, it's um, it's 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 probably getting a bit tougher um, the the longer it goes on. Um, or the closer it gets to the fight, it, invariably it's it's the one thing I th I think of when I'm in bed and I'm lying there and I can't sleep. It's the go to the fight. It go to the fight and what's the first thing that's going to happen? And what's yeah, the, yeah. And I like like I like to think of myself as a fairly lateral thinker and very practical. Yeah. And I'm like it can only kind of what well, doesn't stop your mm -hmm. the head from going off in a, in a minute. It's common. That's the way it is for for all the guys I work with. They all have that that same thing. Especially as you get closer to the fight, that gets more and more and more. The win comes after the performance. You don't go in and win, you go in and perform, and off the back of the performance comes the win. From Mike to, you know, to actually go to an actual event, get into the cage, first fight as well, which, you know, will add a little bit of pressure. So win, lose, or draw, it's an incredible achievement, and just all I can say is the very best of luck to him on the night. a lot of it on TV and I'd, I'd, I'd gone to a couple of different different sessions just some some jiu-jitsu and stuff like that and and uh, Mike had taught me about his brother's interest in the sport as well and and about what he was thinking of doing and I said well it's kind of a chance you, this is it now really if you want to do it you, you, you gotta you gotta 
go balls out and, 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 and throw yourself into it. And it's a, it was a massive challenge, but like that's, I suppose, that's Mike's nature. He doesn't do things by halves. So many people have an opinion on what should be done, what way it should be done. He should have done this, he should have done that. Every, every, every idiot has an opinion, but there's not, 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 not everyone can, can, um, can actually set it in writing and build himself up and go in and do it. Go in and do what they think needs to be done. You know what I mean? And anyone that does that, regardless of level, regardless of anything, regardless of if it's in a big arena, live on TV across the world, or a little small GA hall in front of nobody, I have respect for that person. You know? And so anyone involved in martial arts and in combat sport will also have respect uh, for that person, no doubt. What Safe and Main is trying to do is bring in minimum safety standards for fighters. And by minimum, I mean high quality safety standards. So it'll be things like um, all professional fighters will have to be blood tested, all fighters will have to have annual medicals, so uh, all fighters can be guaranteed a very high level of, of safety. We're really just trying to make MMA safer for, for everybody involved. Look, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, cage fighting now because Mike Sheridan uh, has decided he's up for a bit of that. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning, Ryan. What in the name of God have you got yourself into? First of all, you're with Joe.ie. That's, that's your day job. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're, you're kind of running that website. We've spoken about that on this program a few times. So that's, that's very blokey. It is, so yeah. So is this. The, yeah, so is this. They kind of they align quite well, actually, don't they? And a few months ago, I had a discussion with one of my bosses, Jerry Flannery, mm -hmm. and it just kind of gave me the kick that I needed. And I was like, right, literally. let's do this. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. So, so, and until quite recently, for, there, there are people like me who d d divide it into two camps on it. One is you just see a cage, you hear the word cage yeah. fight, you just think it's two lads kicking the face off each other and there's no sense or rhyme or reason to it. And then the second is, if you actually talk to somebody who does it, you realise that it's respectful, yeah. it's, it's, it's deeply skillful, and it's something that is yeah, martial arts with the emphasis on the arts rather yeah. than the martial arts. Uh, a lot of people are uneducated about the sport and there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, first of all, most of our fighters are college educated. Uh, the other thing is, is that you will see the greatest sportsmanship ever in this, uh, in this sport. You know, these are normal people with, uh, with normal backgrounds and, uh, you know, are, are, they, are they aggressive guys? Sure they are when they're in there fighting, but outside of the octagon, they're all really good people. Yeah, there is a bit of hype about it now, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I think we're going. I think we're going to be doing a bit, a little bit of TV um, in the in open the coming weeks. Maybe I think Ireland AM. Um, there is going to come a point though where I'm just going to need to concentrate on the fight. So yeah, memo went around RT about me that it was so shiny. It went to all the makeup artists in RT <laughs> that it was on air like, and you could probably see a reflection in my forehead. <laughs> very shiny, apparently. <laughs> what I did notice from Mike from the start was he was very dedicated, you know. I said to him, you're going to have to train, uh, train six times a week, you know, every day, maybe one day rest. But, um, you know, you say that to most guys, and they say, yeah, I'll do, and after a week they're gone. But this is not for the faint-hearted. 
Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, yeah. It, it really isn't. And usually, guys have, uh, people who take it up have had, you know, fairly long uh, amateur careers in other forms of martial arts. So to come into it as a newbie with no background whatsoever, you really do need a killer instinct to succeed at it. You need to be good and you need to, when you have them down and you have them on the go, you need to keep it that way. Mm. Mike, have you ever, have you ever had a fight in your life? Mike's last three months have been absolutely crazy. He's training um, five, six days a week, twice a day. It's really, really intense. Um, his diet, I've never seen him eat like that. He hasn't had a drink. He's training actually as a fighter, but he's trying to condense it into three months, which is absolutely crazy because it takes years and years and years to get where, where he needs to go, you know? So what he's doing, I think, is amazing. He's, he's incredible what he's doing. Um, you know, if he wins or loses, it doesn't really matter. You know, the fact that he even got in there and he's able to compete is amazing because, like I said, those guys take years and years in training. I'm all respect him, like, you know, whatever he does, I'm gonna support him. I've seen the way he's training with the younger lads. Some of the younger lads now are 19, 20, and they're absolutely dynamite. Michael is mixing up with them, and just to see him getting in there with them is, is blowing me away, how tough it is. He's walking out with bruises, he's, he, his legs are in bits, he can't walk. I mean, it's, it's tough, it's not easy. The first day, so the 13th of June, you were 86 kilos and 16.7% body fat. So what are we doing? You're 77.3 kilos and 6.3% body fat. So you've lost more than 10% body fat um, and almost 10 kilos on the scales. Well, in terms of the, the physical end of things, the hard work is done. Now it's, I think, where this becomes most important, and it's staying calm. Staying focused, obviously he's going to be running through the fight in his head, visualising the fact that he's going to win the fight, and it's just not about getting overexcited on the day and burning up that nervous energy. So if he can just stay calm. So when my sister comes back at six, I'll give you the... Uh, when I first stepped foot in an MMA, MMA scene, you know, and that, that is, it's daunting, you know, because it's as real as it gets. The small gloves that you can kick, you, there's bare shin, your bare foot, there's no head guard. It's more raw. Foot stomps are allowed. Shoulder shots are allowed against the cage in the clinch. Um, 
when it hits the ground, punches to the head, you can downward elbow the legs in guard. If you pass guard, you can back elbow the body in side control. Just make sure the guy isn't turned into you and it becomes a spinal elbow. Uh, you cannot throw a downward elbow at any stage uh, to the body. Okay, so a back elbow from side control, no problem, or obviously to the legs as well. Uh, the same again in guard. Uh, in terms of uh, targets, you'll always hear us on the ground, particularly in the amateur rules set, saying check your targets. Um, what that means. When I first step foot in the cage, it, it, it is an experience. It's a daunting experience. And when the, when the cage is up, and it's literally suffocating. You know what I mean? You, you feel suffocated by it. And in the red corner, this man also weighed in at 77 kilo. He is representing Joe Dadaí and hails from Dublin, Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, Iron Mike Shea. This guy has only been training for 12 weeks, so it's going to be interesting to see what sort of skills he was able to learn in uh, such a short period of time. My first time, it was just like a blow. I could just, I was afraid to look left or right. You know, I didn't want to look left or right at anyone. I was just looking straight ahead and just walking straight ahead. I realized that everyone goes through these emotions. You know what I mean? We all have the same fears. I know on the other end of the, of the dressing room, or the, in the next change room, my opponent is feeling the exact same. You know what I mean? So we're too, at the end of the day, it's two scared, scared little guys, you know what I mean, that are gonna go in a fight. Horrible, absolutely horrible. I was so scared. I, uh, I know I had to kind of look confident because if he had seen me and I had had my head down, I couldn't look him in the eye or anything like that, I know he would have had an edge. So the idea was to look confident, look like it wasn't bothering me or anything like that. So yeah. On the outside, I might have looked confident, but on the inside, I was dying. I wanted to cry. I wanted to just run away. But I caught one glimpse of him, and he was there chewing on his gum shield, and he looked just as always looked crazy he did. So that wasn't a good thing. So as soon as I saw him, I looked back, and I was like, all right, that's it. Don't look at him again. Just kind of focus head on now. When they walk into that cage, it's like the last six to eight weeks of their life comes down to this one moment. Okay, this is uh, gonna be a very interesting fight now. Alex Moon uh, has had some uh, Taekwondo background, so I, I would imagine he would wanna keep this fight standing. He's getting rocked. This is going to get stopped if he doesn't do something. The first few seconds, I, I didn't think it was going to be as full on as it was. I really didn't. I wasn't prepared for it at all. And I just, I, couldn't, I just ran. I just ran. I couldn't stick it. So I waited outside till it was over. I think I ran out in the first 10 seconds, 20 seconds. I think I put my head down and looked up and I just ran. I just couldn't handle it. I actually thought he was gonna get finished there, but he did really well to recover. And let's see what he can do here now. that despite uh, Alex being uh, very aggressive with his punches, he wasn't wild. All the punches were very controlled, and you can see his uh, experience in Taekwondo. Absolutely. Fair play.
play to Michael Sheridan for surviving this. to comment on the, the, the toughness of Mike Sheridan. He survived that early onslaught. I guess Michael Sheridan wanted to find out what it's like to be a fighter. I think he's finding out tonight. Alex Swan's uh, mouth is open and he's breathing. Looks maybe, maybe a chance of him being tired here. I, I kind of I connected well with him in the first round, and I thought after that he'd be kind of he, that would maybe wear him off or that would affect his breeding or kind of put him off his game plan. Didn't at all. He uh, came much stronger in the second round and the third round, where I was definitely going the other way. I, I felt so tired. My punches are getting weaker and slower. You can see that Alex Swan is a little bit tired in this round. He's not as aggressive anymore. But it's, it's, it's so tough, I mean, Artem, you know better than most. It's so, it's so hard to sustain that pace, you know, over, over three rounds. Michael just keeps coming forward. He's not taking a backward step yet. No matter how much I hit him, he just kept coming back and coming back. I thought, you know, eventually he'd wear it off or wear out because I, I definitely was. Nice level change. That was beautiful timing. That's... We could have been an early contender for fight of the night maybe here, Artem. He was a freak. He just kept coming back, kept coming back. We hear the 10 second clap. What a heart. What a wow. great fight and what a great display by both fighters. Great fight. Hats off to both men. That was a great display of courage and heart and uh, Swing until the end, it was a great fight to see. I was lucky that the fight was only six minutes long. If it had been longer, I would have been in trouble, I'd say. to the judges' scorecards, and all three give the unanimous decision to the blue corner, Alex Swan! Yeah, well, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, yeah look, you only say sorry to me. You don't everything. You went in here, done what you said you were going to do. Great and fight. I knew, listen, Pete, I knew you weren't going to quit. Yeah, too fucking tough on that. I'm very proud to fucking have the train with you. I really appreciate it. It's a short space of time for the guy to be getting in and fighting, but at the same time, you know, he went in, he done it, and he proved all people wrong. People that maybe thought he wouldn't get in and do it, he went in and done it. So, like, hopefully he can continue on and then maybe do another three months and then get another fight under his belt. And then hopefully next time, like, he get the W. But that was a perfect performance from Michael Sheridan. Excellent performance. Really, really happy with his performance. Like, that's not some guy they just pulled in off the street. That's mm. a guy with proper martial arts experience and, and a really strong fit mm. guy. And you you took him into deep waters. That's so much even. Mm. Probably strong. And you got to be proud of yourself. Mm. Everyone else is. <laughs> That's a good thing, that is a good thing, it just shows the competitor. So obviously with a documentary like this, it would have been a nice, I guess, kind of a neat ending to it, uh, sort of a fairy tale ending to it, to have uh, Mike go in there and have won the contest. And I don't think winning the fight was really the ultimate aim of this. The ultimate aim of this was to put himself through a process that very, very few people on the planet will ever do or would ever have the nerve to do. And uh, for me, that's really what MMA competition is about, and for someone to have gone through that, I don't believe there can be a loser. I think he was a winner. You know, I have so much respect for Mike. 
uh, putting himself out there, doing what didn't need to be done. He didn't need to do it. He took some shots, he kept going, he kept fighting back. And that's what it is, like Rocky says, it's not about how hard uh, you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. He took some shots, kept moving forward, fought to the bell, fought to the end. You know what I mean? So I have so much respect for the guy, I can't even put it into words. The Irish have been fighting since the beginning of time, man, and, and they love it over there, and we will be back. Mike was something uh, that I got done from just for a, uh, just remind him of, you know, all he's done over the past three months and, uh, you know, all the effort he's put in. So uh, I'd just like to present you with that, Mike. Yeah. Ah. Woo! Owen Roddy is, uh, is an absolute gentleman. He's the personification of the word. Um, he's a superb coach. Um, and ultimately, he's a really, really uh, nice bloke. And you can see the way the rest of the lads in Primal Gym look at him. And just to have guys like Dana White and Conor McGregor and John Kavanagh and Cole Pendrith and, um, you know, for me the most importantly of all, Owen Roddy, uh, say the things uh, that they've said about me is, it is beyond humbling. I, don't, I, I couldn't be happier with what Mike has done in, in the three months, you know, so, yeah, uh, BFFs I would say, what? Well. <laughs>